All right, this is Jahangir from Medporium, and today we have part one of our genetics and cellular function unit. In part one, we want to answer the essential question of what DNA is. We will also discuss RNA, chromatin, and chromosomes, and genes. Not the ones you're wearing, but genes related to biology. So let's get started. All right, so we're first going to talk about nucleic acids. Now we have two different nucleic acids. We have DNA and RNA. So we'll first discuss DNA. So DNA, also known as deoxyribonucleic acid, is just a spirally structure you can see here with those ladders. We'll talk about those later. So DNA, the main function is that it carries genetic information. I'll just paraphrase information by saying info. It's also the blueprint of life, the blueprint for us. So DNA is much more different from RNA in that it has a double helix as you can see on the picture to my left now let's get into some anatomy of the dna we'll first start by this spirally structure this is our backbone and it is comprised comprised of our sugar and phosphate it's also known as the sugar phosphate backbone now these laterally structures we have here with different colors, they're known as our nitrogenous bases. I'll just paraphrase and just say N is our nitrogenous and bases. Now what does that look like? So here's a picture of what our backbone may look like. We have our sugar, which is our orange structure, and we have our phosphate, which is just this blue, which is just this green ball, sorry. So in DNA, the sugar is known as deoxyribose, hence the name deoxyribonucleic acid. So deoxyribose. Now, this red structure right here is known as our nitrogenous bases. And as always, I'm just putting N as our nitrogenous. So what are nitrogenous bases? Well, we're going to scroll up a little and we'll see these four different nitrogenous bases. So we'll talk about the green structure first. And that is called cytosine. It's also just shown as C. Now the next one we have is thymine. So cytosine and thymine are part of a group called the pyrimidines. Now as you can see, pyrimidines have a single circle, single ring structure, as you can see from cytosine and thymine. So now let's move over to our other nitrogenous bases. So the first one, this purple structure, is known as guanine. Guanine is also shown as just G. The second one we have is called Adenine. Adenine is also shown by just a. Now, guanine and adenine are part of a group called the purines or purines. Now, as you can see, the purines have two rings as their structure. To memorize which nitrogenous bases are purines, you could think about G as being guacamole and A as being applesauce. Guacamole and applesauce are basically a puree. That's where the name comes in as purines. Now, pyrimidines and purines will always bind together. There's no pyrimidine binding with pyrimidine. Thymine will never bind with cytosine and adenine will never bind with guanine. It's always a purine binding, binding with a pyrimidine and vice versa. So, Usually in DNA, adenine will always bind with thymine, and guanine will always bind with cytosine, and vice versa. To memorize this, you could think about teachers like apples and cows like grass, or you could just think about grass like cows and apples like teachers. So now let's talk about the site of action in which DNA is held. So DNA is DNA carries its functions in the nucleus basically the control center of the cell, and it cannot leave the nucleus, which is one disadvantage of DNA. It is also irreplaceable. So DNA cannot leave the nucleus, and it, all, it is also irreplaceable. So DNA calls orders to the RNA. It's basically the army general. So basically, DNA is telling RNA what to do, and it's basically coding or making a copy of itself for the RNA. So in general, DNA codes for our genetic information, also known as our blueprint. It is double helix, stays in the nucleus. It is also irreplaceable, and it codes for the synthesis of RNA and other proteins. It tells the RNA what to do. All right, so now let's talk about RNA. RNA, also known as ribonucleic acid, has a single strand, unlike DNA. Now, RNA can 
leave the nucleus. That's the advantage of the RNA. It can leave the nucleus. RNA basically carries out the information told by the DNA. And that info is what makes our proteins. It assembles the proteins. It is also replaceable, meaning the DNA can just make more of this. Now, RNA, as you can see on my picture on my left, as we talked about, is a single strand with one nitrogenous base in each of these strands. Now, in RNA, we have a different nitrogenous base that takes over thymine, and that is called uracil. Now, uracil, as I talked about, takes over the job of thymine and attaches to adenine. So basically, the nitrogenous bases in RNA include adenine, cytosine, guanine, and our new nitrogenous base, which is called uracil. Thymine is only in DNA, while uracil is only in RNA. All right, so now let's talk about chromatin and chromosomes. And to do that, we're going to look at the picture to my right. So here's a picture of just DNA just being coiling around, coiling around. Now, when we're trying to make a chromosome, there's going to be these histones. So I'll just draw it right here. And histones are just a type of protein in which let's just color code that i'll just use green as my dna so dna will wrap around that histone as you can see so the histones are our core particle and our dna is known as our linker dna which makes our nucleosome now that nucleosome will also wrap around and wrap around to make a thin fiber called chromatin this whole thing is called chromatin so let's just define what chromatin is and we'll just use the same color so chromatin is just a thin fiber of our nucleosomes and our dna the dna that has been wrapped around with those histones so that chromatin would just look like all of these nucleosomes wrapped around together in a very thin fiber so that's for a non-dividing cell in a non-dividing cell that chromatin will stay in our nucleus so let's just say this is our nucleus and this is our whole cell that that chromatin will stay in the nucleus for a non-dividing cell but let's just say we are uh, we are a non-dividing cell the cell is going through mitosis in that case that chromatin will loop around again and again and again to be condensed or more packed together to form each chromatide now chromatide is just one of these long structures and both of them make a chromosome so Let's just define what a chromosome is. So a chromosome is just a, a structure that carries our genetic information. And let's just go through some anatomy of the chromosome. So right over here, this pink line shows what a chromatide is. And the circled is what a chromatide is. Now, what does the anatomy of a chromosome look like? Well, we have our kintocore. And our kintocore is just a protein that is around the centromere. Now, think of the centromere as a pinched line that basically fuses these two chromatides together. Now, we, as usual, have our two sister chromatides. Now, in a chromosome, we have our short arm. And as you can guess, right over here would be our long arm so in general the chromosome is the structure of genetic information that holds our very compact dna with all those histones and our chromatin is just a thin fiber of dna with those histones now in the human body we have 46 of these chromosomes we also have 23 pairs of each of these so what would that look like so i'm just going to draw just one of these chromosomes and another that would be a pair of chromosomes now one is given from our mom and one is give one is given from our dad so we have 23 pairs of chromosomes each given by one parent all right so now we're going to talk about genes not the ones you're wearing but the ones related to biology and the definition for genes are the information portion of DNA that codes for the production of RNA and encodes for our proteins. And the proteins make our cells, or make the tissues, and the organs that help us survive. Now, genes are, let's just say, this is our DNA. So this is what a whole gene would look like. And a gene is just a long strand of DNA that codes for a specific protein.
So let's just say this is one of our proteins and the gene is just a long part of that DNA that codes for the specific protein. It can also code for other proteins which we'll talk about later. Now let's talk about a genome which is all of our genetic information in the nucleus of a cell. So let's just say this is all our DNA and here's our nucleus and let me just color code that. Here's our whole cell. Now that is all of our genetic information in the nucleus of our cell. All the information we need for our body to function. So to illustrate that, let's talk about our liver cells and our brain cells. Now the liver cells and brain cells have the same genetic information. So the liver cells have information about brain cells and the brain cells have information about the liver cells. But they won't use that information since it is not needed. The liver will use its genetic, genetic information for the functions of the liver while the brain will use its brain information from the genetic information to function. So that's the basics of genomes. So we just talked about genomes now let's talk about genetic code and that is the operation in which our nucleotides are coded to create proteins so think of it as just the cell machinery it's like a big factory so let me just draw what that would look like let's just say that's a factory now the genetic code is what carries that process of coding our proteins which is called protein synthesis in which we'll talk about later now in genetic code there must be more than two nucleotides to code for a protein there's usually three which is called a codon and that is three nucleotides in the messenger rna we'll talk about the different rna later now the three nucleotides in the dna is called a base triplet now remember this is an important thing to know that the codon aug usually serves as the start codon there's also stop codon which we'll talk about later so to synthesize all this information, genetic code is just the operation in which our four different nitrogenous bases or nucleotides are coded to make certain proteins. It's, it's basically the order that our proteins are made. Alright, so that wraps up part one of genetics and cellular function in which we talked about DNA and RNA, chromatin and chromosomes, genes, genome, and genetic code. And as always, a Pomodoro day will make you a doctor someday. I'll see you next time.